Most of us love bullet hell games, but when we have so many bullets, a pulling system is needed to have good performance. This is why, in this video, I am going to teach you how to create a pulling system. Ok, but what is a pulling system and why do we need it? For a better understanding, we are going to compare no pulling versus pulling. When we have no pulling, we can see that each time a bullet is fired, instantiate is called and which time a bullet is destroyed, destroy method is called. These functions usually don't have a big impact on performance, but when we are calling them tens or hundreds of times per second, our performance will drop. With objects pulling, we are going to have a pool of objects that are going to be reused. When we fire a bullet, we check to see if there are any bullets left in the pool, and if there are, we use one of them, otherwise we instantiate a new bullet. When we have to destroy an object, we first check to see if there is still space in our objects pool, and if there is, we deactivate it and add it to the pool, and if not, then we destroy it. As you can see, instantiate was called for the first bullets, cause the pool was empty, and after that we just reused the bullets. Now, this is really good because we don't have to call instantiate and destroy so often, but when the first combat breaks out, we still risk to encounter a lag spike, because we are going to instantiate a lot of objects. To handle that, we can also have a pre-war monor pool, meaning that the bullets are going to be loaded in the pool when the game starts, and when a fight breaks out, we already have the bullets prepared and no lag spike is going to occur. Great, now before we jump in the implementation, let's take a quick look at the scene. I have already prepared a scene to test our pooling system, and in the scene we have a turret with a high fire rate which can be toggled on or off. I won't bother with explaining the turret implementation, because it's not important for this video. The only thing that you need to pay attention to is that right now the bullets are instantiated each time the turret fires and destroyed after they have traveled a certain distance or they collided with an object. We create a new folder inside our assets and we call it pooling, and inside that folder we create a new script called pullable object. Pullable object is going to be the base class for all pullable objects, so we are going to make this class abstract, and we are going to have two methods, invoke destroy, which is going to invoke on destroy action, and reset state, which is going to activate the object and handle any logic needed to reset the state of the object. Next, we go to the asset store and search for JSON keyword. We select json.net for unity asset, download it, and import it in our project. We are going to need this in order to read from JSON file. After the install, we create a new script called pool and we open it. Our objects pool can have either a flexible size or a fixed one, so we create an enum called pool size type, which has the options fixed and flexible. We want to be able to save or load a pool from a file, so we put the system.serializable attribute. Our pool class is going to have the following fields. An ID, which is going to be unique for each pool, and prefab path, which is going to contain the path towards the pooled object prefab, the pool size type, the initial size, maximum size, a boolean if the pool ha has preworm or not, and also a preworm priority. Preworm and preworm priority are not so important right now. Then we are going to have a queue of pullable objects named pool objects. If you don't know what a queue is, is a data structure that follows the first in first out or FIFO rule. The item that goes in first is the item that comes out first too. We also have the pullable object prefab and a boolean if the prefab is loaded or not. We declare a public object container which will be the parent of our pulled objects. We create a method called set pulled objects container which will set the value of our pulled objects container. The next method that we create is create new pullable object, which is of type pullable object. This method is going to return a new instance of our prefab. In this method, we first check if the prefab is loaded, and we load it if it's not loaded already. Then we check if the prefab is null, and if it is, we log an error and we return null. It's very important to make null checks because we don't want our entire game to break because of a prefab. Our prefab is valid, so we create a new instance of it and we set the parent to be pulled object container. Then we add a listener to our onDestroy action, which will call the reuseObject method for this instance. We hit Alt Enter so that Visual Studio creates a reuseObject method for us. I know maybe it is a lot to process if you are not so familiar with actions or delegates, 
But to make it simple, think that each time we invoke on destroy action, our reuse object function is going to get called. In our reuse object function, if the pool size type is fixed and the pool object's count is greater or equal to the maximum value, we destroy the object because there is no more space for it in our pool. Otherwise, we deactivate the game object, we set the parent to be pooled objects container and we enqueue it to pool objects. We are going to create a get method of type pooled object. If pooled objects that count is greater than zero, the method will get the next pooled object using pool objects that dq. It will call a reset state for that object and it will return it. Otherwise, it will return create new poolable object. Also, our class should not be derived from mono behavior. Next, we create a script called objects pooler and we open it. We want the objects pooler to be a singleton. If you don't know, a singleton is a design pattern where there is going to be only one instance of that class and you can access it from anywhere. To implement the singleton, we create a property called instance and inside the getter, we check if the instance is null and if yes, we create a new instance. After that, we return the instance. In the awake method, if the instance is not null and is different from this, we destroy the game object because that means that there is already an instance of objects pooler and otherwise we set the instance to be this game object. Then we declare a dictionary with the key of type string and value of type pool and we call it pools. We create a method called loadFromJSON. This method will check if the file pools.json exists in streaming assets and if yes, it will use json convert that deserialized object to load the pools from json as an array of pools. And after that, we use that to dictionary extension from linq in order to convert the array to a dictionary so that we can store it in pools. We call this method in awake. Then we create a method called set pools containers, which will create a container game object for each pool. Each container will be named using the ID of the pool. And after that, this container is going to be assigned for that pool. We also call this method in awake. After that, we create a method get, which will take a string ID as a parameter and it will return an object of type poolable object. If the ID exists in pools, the method will call the method get from the pool with that ID, otherwise it will return null. Then we use method overloading to create another get method, which will require an ID, a position, and if the ID exists, it will return the pooled object, but it will also set its position, and otherwise it will return null. We create another get method, which will require an ID, a position, and a rotation, and if the ID exists, it will return the pooled object at the given position and with the given rotation, and if it doesn't exist, it will return null. We create a fourth get method, which will require an ID, a transform named new parent, and a bool reset transform. And if the ID exists, it will return the pooled object with the new parent as a parent, and it will reset the position of the pooled object if the reset transform is set to true. If the ID does not exist, it will return null. The implementation is done, now we just have to do a couple more things. Let's head back to Unity. In Assets, if you don't have a folder named Resources, create one. Inside that folder, I have a folder named Prefabs, and inside it I have the bullet prefab that I want to pull. Just make sure that your prefab is inside the Resources. Then, back to Assets, if you don't have a Streaming, folder, streaming Assets folder, create one. Inside it, we are going to create our pools.json file. To create a .json file, right click in Streaming Assets, show in Explorer, then enter Streaming Assets, create a new text file, and rename it to pools.json. Make sure to change the extension from that text to .json. Inside it, we add an entry to our prefab, we give it an ID, and we make sure that we write down the path to that prefab inside the resources. We can add entries to multiple prefabs here, just make sure that you give them different IDs. Inside my turret controller script, in attack method, I use objects pooler, that instance, that get, of bullet and canon one that transform that position. As you can see, all we have to do now in order to use our pullable objects is to know the ID of our pullable and we can use it from anywhere. 
Pretty cool, right? The project will also have the preworm system implemented, but I won't cover it in this tutorial cause it's already long and complicated. I hope that you enjoyed the video, if you have any questions feel free to ask me in the comments and if you liked this video then please hit that like button and subscribe for more awesome content. See you next time!